עוד יותר, יוצרי התוכן של ישראל. Welcome back, folks. Matan, I missed you. I yeah, really I missed, missed you. you Did you actually, or are you just saying that? I've, uh, hi, guys. How are you guys doing? <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. Of course, I missed you. Last, Come on. Last time Matan and I saw each other was uh, Shabbat dinner. That's true. At my place with my roommate and Michael Rappaport. That's true. It and was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. My publicist, just, she just scolded me. She was like, I have, to, like I have to find out. A day late that you had a Shabbat dinner with Michael Rappaport. I was like, he's my friend. I don't know. I didn't think it was like an item or something. He was like, of course it is. Of course is. it is. <laughs> Start thinking about this stuff. I was like, I'm so sorry. I will tell you everything I do. Like if you want to make an item of everything, like literally everything I do. No, it was a big deal. And what, the thing that pissed me off the most though was this. So my roommate and I, Leah, we ended up catering food because we were stressed. We didn't want to, we had high, high we'll, stakes we'll to host Michael Rappaport. We'll talk about your catering in a second. And, and actually, uh, Michael, belie- Michael fell for it. Like Leah, we, we went along with it. Everyone, everyone went along with it. Then Leah accidentally slips it out that um, we cater the food because we thought everyone had known. Michael didn't know. Michael was hyping us up. He was like, you guys are such nice Jewish girls. I'm going to story you guys. Like, this is amazing. I can't believe you cooked. <laughs> and then Leah blurts it out. Michael didn't hear it. And Matan goes off, goes off. He's like, I fucking knew it. I knew you guys catered this listen, stuff. <laughs> listen, 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 listen. Leah, she didn't blurt it out. You did. No, I didn't. You did. I did not say. Why, would I, why would I say that? Me and Michael, Michael and me. <laughs> we're Michael looking and at I, the Michael food. and I. Michael, Michael and I. I. We're looking at the food. And Michael was like. This is so good. This is so impressive. So like they're two like single girls roommates just look like a look at this spread like it's a we spread did well. we did well we did well and i was like michael listen i'm not <laughs> gonna be fooled i'm sorry if it's ruin your you know your shabbat dinner but it's bullshit is takeout what gave like, it away the quinoa salad the quinoa salad with the, with the cranberries and i was like <laughs> there's no way no one made this that. no <laughs> fucking way they have no idea what's inside it and you girls are going like going like oh yeah did you guys like the schnitzel did you guys like the potatoes and like we've been slaving all day and i was like and i was looking at michael and i was like listen and he was so impressed he was so he was impressed hyping and, us and up. he was looking at me like like i think you're wrong like i think those girls really did it <laughs> and we, i'm sitting like uh, across from Michael and you're sitting next to him and you were like going you were, you were like um, so yeah we ordered we made the food <laughs> and I was I'm like, like fuck, fuck you I knew it I knew it all along and Michael was like what is happening I was like I <laughs> no fucking idea. told you I told you they ordered the food and I was like I believed you <laughs> he felt so betrayed it was the funniest I was so sad he was about to story us he was about to, about to be two nice Jewish girls just cook this oh, meal and it all it all went to shit after yeah. you I was ex- like put your phone down exaggerated the situation I, I was like put the phone down you're not storying <laughs> shit you, you need to ask them the name of the restaurant and you talk that <laughs> restaurant because that food is amazing it had nothing to do with those bitches it was good food it was amazing it was food. good food it was, it was amazing food. food and you go, and you girls are amazing hosts Aww. I thought like I came and you told me uh, dinner was at 7 And I was like, okay, dinner is at seven. Like in my house, seven, eight, around nine. Yeah, we're but you're not start- dealing with Americans. The Americans show up on time. No, I'm not talking about on time. I'm talking about after dinner. Okay. Okay, don't okay, just okay. try you- to... Wait, let's bring this up. Matan was late again. He, yeah. he texts me at 6.45. Michael's about to be at my place. He's like... Chaim Shali, I thought it was at eight. I just thought yeah. it was at seven. My bad, my bad. Always running late. Always running late. And these Americans arrive do. on time. They're hungry. They're ready to eat. And this guy, let me remind you what happened with the podcast with Michael. So. <laughs> anyway, anyway, I thought it's going gonna, it's gonna to end around like nine. Same. People same are going to leave. And I told, I told um, Erez, the owner of Stena Factory, I was like, listen, I, I won't be able to come to the early show because it started at 10. But I feel like, like, I don't want to be stressed. Like, put me in the late show because I feel like we're going to sit down. We're going to, we're going to, I don't know how long it's going to take. And I don't want to be yeah. all like, I have to go to my show. Yeah. Right. Because I don't eat, eat like Shabbat dinner with Michael Rapport very often. Very often. So, exactly. Yeah, exactly. And of course you. And of course, <laughs> which we, we actually, that was our first Shabbat yeah, dinner Yeah, that together. was our first Shabbat dinner. And, and, and we got there and we sat and we ate and it was around eight. And I was like, 
why didn't I took the early show? Yeah. Like, it looks like... And it's you wrapping guys, up soon. Yeah, and you guys <laughs> like, let's move to the living room. And we sat there until 11. 11. Yeah. Like, yeah. I left at 11. Yeah. And, and I had so much fun. So many good conversations. It's amazing. Like, to really to get... The, because our phones were down. Yeah. It was like a legit Shabbat. And I felt really like... Like family, you felt like at nobody. Home. Yeah, nobody have to like record anything. And you know me, like yeah. I, you know, I, I work hard on social media. But for me, those like four hours, I think, from seven to eleven, that was amazing. I was just having fun and joining with my friends. It was uh, Leah's uh, brother, brother David, David birthday. birthday. Yeah. yeah. So I really felt like. Uh, it's a birthday Shabbat birthday dinner, Shabbat dinner. And with family. It was family. With family. So that's uh, how it truly felt. Ugh, so people listening are going to give us shit for this now too. Um, but we asked our followers yeah. what they'd want to hear us discuss on this podcast. Yeah. We got around 50 responses. So oh, wow. we have a lot to talk about in next episodes also. But I just want to point out three comments that were made. Okay. Um, in regards to what they want us to talk about. Mm -hmm. You're and Matan's future together. You and Matan being secretly into each other. And mm -hmm. why won't you and Matan date? Uh, because we're brother and sister. <laughs> Guys, once and for all, let it be. Just let it be. We're brother We're and brother sister. We're brother and sister. He loves my mom way too much. Yes, that's true. I would never do that to, <laughs> to her mom. I would never do that to my mom. We we are siblings, basically, at this point. Yeah. Um, that's we it. We kind of look alike. We kind of look alike, we too. We kind of look yeah, alike, yeah. 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 Um, uh, my, 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 you're going to say your dad. You're my dad. Yeah, I knew it. My I knew dad. it. My dad. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe I have dad stories even in this podcast. My my dad is like, you know, English, Hebrew, whatever. He was like, he told me, Shaka, you're gonna love this. He told me, uh, why is this Yemenite girl pretend that she's American? <laughs> um, first of all, I'm not Yemenite. I'm half Iraqi, a fourth Czech, and a fourth Turkish. I'm not Yemenite, so tell him that. Because not that's that there's the anything problem. wrong with Yemenites. <laughs> not that there's anything wrong with Yemenites. <laughs> He told me that at Shabbat dinner. I was like, oh my God. Oh Why? My God. My, my dad, he made me laugh so hard. I couldn't even like... And my brother was like, I know, right? I'm just <laughs> dying. I was just like, oh my God. No, she's from Texas. And my dad was like, no, no she's, she's from not. Stulim. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> there's nothing that offends Iraqis more than being called Yemenites. So. Oh, oh not no. that there's anything wrong with it. Not nothing wrong with that I love Yemenite I love Yemenite's food anyway Dad, anyways whatever she's from Texas I'm, I'm from sorry Texas. actually yeah I'm from Texas and Kansas yeah. and Israel yeah yeah um, okay let's the, talk the, the Yemenite daughter <laughs> <laughs> oh no the house is flying oh no <laughs> Iraqi please mm. please mom and dad if I'm you're sorry. listening the Iraqi Matan, daughter yeah, yeah. yeah Matan just offended you guys but he will make up for it don't worry about it. Um, okay, so let's talk about current events. Tensions high this past weekend, week in Israel. Um, I know a lot of us, Aline, were freaked out. We started yeah. stacking up on groceries. <laughs> we thought did. a war was going to break oh out. Oh, my God. We were all sending in our group chats. Okay, let's go go buy breads, canned tuna, canned, uh, canned beans, all that stuff. We were panicking. Um, what are your thoughts on what happened? And did we have a reasonable response? You know, when you're in a classroom... And you've been there for a while. It's like you're whatever. You're in seventh grade, eighth grade, whatever. And there's a new student coming in. And he doesn't know like how things work, right? So when the teacher says, uh, like, if you guys continue doing this or that, um, you know, I'm canceling recess, whatever. Mm -hmm. And the new guy is always like, oh, my God, guys, let's be quiet. And they're all like, you know, the veterans are like, Shut up. He's not going to do it. Like, come on. Like, what are you, what are you stacking up your, like, you know, your <laughs> notebooks? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't, like, you're not going to stay here forever. So that's the same with Israelis and Americans. They made Yeah. <laughs> Every time people are like Iraq or Iran is going to attack, they're like, oh my God, I have to buy everything and I have to have a lot of like cash. And Israelis are just like, you know what? If this is the end, this is the end. We're exhausted, you know? So that's the same thing. What do you think? I would do if a war started in the north, and Olim as a general group would would do if a, a war started in the north. You specifically, yeah, or Olim, <laughs> both me specifically, and then Olim as a whole category. Oh, uh, so you're gonna run away, <laughs> like you do every time, uh, which is awesome. Which is awesome. Yeah, yeah. Right. it's like it's, <laughs> the first story is like it's the first story is like I can't believe what's happening. I'm, I'm taking a break from social media, and then the second story is like, hey, New York. <laughs> <laughs> So happy to be here again. 
It's exactly what happened last time. <laughs> <laughs> and then she's like, and then she's like going to Texas and New York, like walking around, like having a great time. And they're like, I'm so sad. I'm not in Israel right now. Like, you know what? It, every single time. Every you, single time. Yeah. So that's what you're going to do. What, what, majority Olim, of Olim, yeah. I think they're going to join back to reserve service they're, or go like um, volunteer, whatever, like they did last time. Social media activism. Social a lot of the media. Japs stepped up during the last yes. war. Yes. All the Jewish American princesses, they were wartime heroes yeah. also. They stepped up to the yeah. plate. Yeah. You girls surprised all of us. <laughs> all of us. We all thought you're going to be like, I need to take a break from social media, blah, blah, blah. But no, you girls just... No, they stepped just, up to the plate. In Hebrew, we say, alulat kafa. They're like, all about like offense. You know, the best yeah, yeah. defense is offense. Yeah. They were like, don't mess with us. Because, you know, we, we know social media yeah. and we got our dad's money and we we're unstoppable. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and we're like, oh, shit. Okay. Calm down. The real wartime heroes. Yeah. The jobs. Um, wait, so Matan, what can you tell Olim who are listening who are panicking about a potential war in the North? What would what would be your biggest piece of advice? If panicking about a war is something you do, you live in the wrong country, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> you live in the wrong country. Like if if like if talking about war is you know stress you out, go visit New York. You know, go. You know, it's 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 not a bad thing. I can understand that. I grew up here. We all just fucking like get it. You know, like, but don't, don't you feel like this time it's like a little different, like World War Three vibes? Every time is a little different. Okay. Tomorrow at uh, April eight. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> they they're saying they're gonna activate the CERN uh, hydrogen collider in Sweden, and every time they turn it on, something weird happened. In right? two thousand and twelve, they have the whole conspiracy about the world ended in twenty twelve. And then the CERN Hydrogen Collider just jumped us to another reality. That's why there's some things from your childhood that you don't remember. Like you remember in a certain way and they're not. Like the uh, magic mirror on the wall. Mirror, mirror on, on the wall. wall. How do you remember it? Mirror, mirror on the wall. Never was, never, never was mirror, mirror on the wall. It was always magic mirror on the wall. Mind blown right now. Yeah. So, so that's the whole like theory about every time that, that, you know, the CERN. I've never heard of this before. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> so it's tomorrow. So I don't. <laughs> so Aleem, get your flights tonight. Yeah. You know what I mean? Things are going to get really fucked up. So <clears throat> buckle up. Whew. Um, okay, in other international and lighter news, Forbes released its billionaire list for oh, 2023. Finally, I was yeah. waiting. Well, yeah, you were waiting. <laughs> Who are the new billionaires? Taylor you know? Swift is a new billionaire, which yes. is surprising because I had already assumed she was a billionaire. Uh, we first, all. first music, first artist to be, become a billionaire uh, solely off her music, which is a big deal. Um, are you a Swiftie, Maton? No, I'm straight. <laughs> there are straight Swifties. <laughs> Not Come really. On. Come on, give me one song you like of hers. Shake it off. Blink space. I, I, you know, I appreciate the early days of Taylor Swift. Oh, you liked her country vibes? You yeah. were one of those? Yeah, yeah, yeah. When she was like, me, me, me. It's like, like okay. a blonde, beautiful. She's still blonde, beautiful. Country girl. Okay. Before she was like, I break up with guys and write songs about it. Um, So I was, I, I really appreciate what she does. But now it's, I feel, it feels like. A cult, in a way. I mean, it is a cult. It's That's a why she's cult. a billionaire. That's she's why she's a billionaire. A billionaire. She she spent the last 10, 15 years. Her era's tours performance, insane. Sold out. She caused an earthquake. Yeah. Like a literal yeah, yeah. earthquake. I don't know if you guys know that, but the concert she had, it was reported like 3.4 and right yeah. there, whatever. Yeah. She caused an actual earthquake from the show. So She's been bringing, and they also reported that she's been bringing business to cities where she's uh, doing concerts. Yeah. Like business is booming. Yeah. She's holding the American economy together at this point. Like this this one woman. It's, it's insane. It's insane. It's, it's insane. insane. Wait, so you don't like her because she writes songs about breaking up with boys? I don't like her because she, lately I feel like she's very repetitive. Okay. Because, you know, it was awesome at the beginning and it's really hard to invent yourself every year. Yeah, yeah. It's really, it's... But she's been doing it. She's been doing it for a long time yeah. and, you know, You're she's saying- she's got her own, like, credit and respect you you can't deny that she's super successful but it's not my cup of tea okay you know okay respect i strongly disagree but respect <laughs> strongly disagree but respect i'm a major swifty yeah, that's our whole relationship i yeah, strongly disagree, disagree but, but i respect, respect. You. it's so true um so swift ranked number 14 on the list of celebrity billionaires with a net worth of 1.1 billion can you guess who the top five celebrity billionaires are cristiano ronaldo no no uh, rihanna 
Yeah, she's number six, actually. Yeah. she's. I know she's a billionaire. She is a billionaire. So, but, well, but, but Taylor Swift is the first? No, Taylor Swift's number 14 on the list of celebrity billionaires. But, but Rihanna... Rihanna is number five. Oh, but not solely for music. Yes. Oh, yes. Whoa, 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 I get it. Because Rihanna, Rihanna was a billionaire. Rihanna has perfume, clothing lines, all that stuff. Rihanna, only- I remember when Rihanna was the first artist oh, that wow. became a million. The like, first female artist, I think. Wow. Or just an artist that became a millionaire. And it was a big talk about that. And and she barely performed at wow. the time. She she was pregnant. She barely did any music. <clears throat> and then she got her new like break in the Super Bowl, I think. Yeah. But yeah, um, yeah Rihanna, 100%. Yeah. So George Lucas, Star Wars, number one celebrity, 5.5 billion. Steven Spielberg, 4.8 billion. Oprah Winfrey, 2.8. Jay-Z and Kim K follow. Um, So that's a, it's a good crew. And Taylor Swift now joined the list. Makes sense. Listen, like those people, like we all assume they're billionaires, you know? Yeah. So nice. This this is a very like high end list to get into. So the total list of Forbes billionaire status was 2,781 billionaires this year. Which oh, is wow. a lot. A lot. A lot. 2,000 um, people yes. are billionaires? That's yeah. So... Yeah. So, Startup Nation, Israel, how many Israeli billionaires do you think we had on that list? Out of 2,781. Israeli? Yes. My gamble is six. Six. Six out of, six out of 2,781. Yeah. Wrong. 42. 42 which is Israelis is, not Jewish Israelis 42 Israelis they made, they made up 1.5% of the billionaire Holy. list that's a big deal that's so a big deal so control the media exactly. do something exactly what exactly. do you mean you have so much money help us that's what I'm saying you know exactly so Jew, you mentioned Jewish how many Jewish billionaires uh, oh god <laughs> that's a how many there are total category. yes <laughs> uh, how many there are total 2,781 2,781. Okay, so 2,769 are Jewish. So this is according to the last year's uh, numbers, but according to Forbes, Israel, 267 Jewish billionaires. 267, that makes sense. That's around 10%. That's like 10%. Yeah. 10%. You're good at, I didn't know you were good at math. It's 10%. It That's is. a tip. It, you don't have didn't to know you like, were math. you know uh, what I mean? You ever go to I'm a restaurant? I'm so impressed. Guys, he's a comedian. Ladies watching this, a comedian and he's good at math. Not at all. That's a false. <laughs> Not at all. I'm terrible at math. My dad actually was really upset with me because he's amazing in, with math. And, and I was not at all. Oh, God. Yeah. He was really, because I'm his, you know, his first son. So he was always like, and, ah. his, fa- and his favorite son. Nah, no, that's not me. No. That's Rami. <laughs> that's Rami. That's Rami. We all know. Rami. <laughs> we all know. My dad is the f- favorite child of my grandma. Okay. And, and he's not the oldest one. Okay. Same. My my brother Rami is the same thing. He's like not the oldest, but he's the favorite. And Rami is actually like my, like my grandma's favorite grandson. Wow. Because, you know. My dad is her favorite son, and he went directly to Army. Just, just passed yeah, me. Passed it down. Like whenever I came, I came to um, visit my grandma in Kirat Malachi, which is all. Where's like Kirat Malachi? Yeah, it's, it's an awful drive. Um, I love Kirat Malachi, the best city in the world. So whenever I came to visit her, every time, where is Rami? <laughs> oh, hey, you, you, I have some money here, give so it to you Rami. can give it to Rami. How old's Rami? Thirty-two, almost thirty-three. I think. Okay. And Just a sweet name, Rami. Rami, yeah. So, so you know, so she, he's the favorite grandson, and my dad is a favorite kid, and I'm just, you know. Here's my Tom Parrots. Yeah. A stand up comedian. Yep. And not good in math at all. I'm just round, rounding up. Rounding up, rounding up. Yeah. Um, okay, so most Americans, I feel like, could rank the top five or six or seven total uh, uh, billionaires on the whole list. Okay. Um, I'm wondering if you could. Who would you say, if you had to guess, the top billionaires? on that list would be Bezos yep one of them correct. Musk correct um, Gates correct I'm uh, impressed wow what do you mean we I'm, hear about him all the time impressed impressed okay um, now that I, I, I went with the obvious um, let's see let's who's, see who's the first one do you know the first one first one with a net worth of 233 billion Bezos nope it's a less common name To be fair, I didn't even know this one. Who is he? Um, Bernard Arnold, founder of Louis Vuitton. Ah, come on. $233 billion, followed by Elon Musk, Jeff Bezos, Mark Zuckerberg. 
the club. Oh, 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 the Mar- Marky Boy. Marky yeah. Boy, our favorite. <laughs> uh, my the, favorite our person favorite on Our favorite Jewish billionaire who stood up for us so much so during much. the war. Thank you, Mark Zuckerberg. He removed wow, all those thank like, pro pallies and everything. He thank helped you. Ma- uh, Matan get off shadow ban. Yeah. yeah. So sweet of you. Uh, 100%. We really appreciate you and thank everything you. you do for the country of Israel. 100%. <laughs> thank you, Marky. Um, but yeah, I would say most Americans slash Aleem could name these people off the top of the really? list. Really? So, yeah. The Louis Vuitton guy? Except Louis Vuitton. We could name Elon Musk. He's like Bill a secret Gates. billionaire. I know. Secret. 233 billion. You know what that means? That's insane. You know what that means? What does that mean? He can give every, listen to this, he can give every citizen in Israel a million dollars. Every citizen gets a million dollars and he wouldn't feel it. That is true. He wouldn't true. like even math. notice Baton it. Baton math. Woo-hoo. Yeah. He wouldn't even <laughs> notice it. How fucked up that is. That's crazy. It's crazy. That's so much money. It's so much money. It's insane. What do you do with so much money? Insane. Holy crap. I know. Insane. Okay. Um, you think he knows how like, uh, like how much is like a, like a carton of milk? You think he knows there's that? There's no way. You, when you, ha- when you have that much wealth, there's absolutely no way. You don't know how, don't know, like how yeah. much things cost, cost anymore. Yeah. Or right? maybe you do because you're, Super smart, but I don't know. No, but like it's not, you know? Yeah. Crazy, crazy. Okay, so now I'm curious to see how well you know the Israeli billionaires. I don't know any of them. Can you not name even one on the My friends are broke, baby. (laughs) My friends are not even... What do you mean? The comedian lifestyle isn't? My friends are not even a a hundred-years, a ten-years, none of them. So but, come on, you have to keep up. Uh, um, Americans, we keep up with the Elon Musks, the the Bill Gates of America. Why don't you keep up with the the ones of Israel? Because we're a different species. Okay. Americans always think like if I work hard enough, I'll be a billionaire, which is false. But they always have this <laughs> notion of like if I put everything into it, like I'm gonna, you know. Yeah. And, and do you tr- not agree with that? Truth hard work. Is, hard work. Obviously, I, I agree with hard work, but it's a little like. You have to have something else. You have to have something like, in addition to hard work. Talent. Talent or whatever. Yeah. Something that you can really, like Taylor Swift, that like you can really like lift up yeah. with an audience or whatever. Or just an amazing business idea. Yeah. But, but you know, it's Israelis, we look at billionaires like a different species. We, do, we don't like, we don't know you guys. Like, I'm, I'm sorry, you know. Oh, and obviously. <laughs> that a, is true. A good inheritance <laughs> is always, you know, so, a building on, you know. Yeah. So let me read you the top five billionaires in Israel. Let me know if any of those names sound familiar okay. to you. Okay. Eyal Ofer, you don't. Okay, Ofer. Okay. The Ofer Malls the, makes sense. Explain to our. Okay, so uh, Ofer family is in charge of many uh, many businesses in Israel, and also the Ofer Malls, like Kenyone Ofer. Okay. So yes. that's Ofer family, and they have like oil and stuff, and they have they got everything, like, something in everything. So that's not surprising at okay. all. Okay. So yeah, first they all offer and then he don't offer. <laughs> so surprising. Shocker. Surprise, surprise. They all offer now worth 24 billion <sighs> USD dollars and followed by Don offer 15.8 billion. Crazy. <sighs> okay, next. Dimitri Buck- Buckman. Bachman? Yeah. Dimitri Bachman. Bachman. Oh, so oh, if you don't know who that? Dimitri Bachman is, I don't know either. <laughs> so I, I, good for you, Dimitri. So the, him and his brother, because the next number four is followed by Igor, his brother. Oh. They founded an online gaming company called Playrix. Apparently you can make billions of dollars well, off no, of gaming online, companies, online gaming companies. Gaming companies is where the money at, 100%. Um, it's like, I, like, gel, like gel for, you know. But what is like a gaming, like gambling, like trading companies like gambling i think of like moon active when i think of that you know no it's 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 a lot of different platforms but i think it comes it comes down to how much money addictive people yeah. can give to video games oh the people sitting at home yeah yeah, yeah just playing like candy crush or yeah. whatever and just you know buying lives or yeah, whatever yeah so yeah i i actually dated a girl that was um she worked in a in a, in a video game company, mm-hmm. like a like a like a slot machine game. Okay, I know. I and, probably know. And she was in charge. Uh, she was in charge on the like sales, and she told me, 
like we were draining those suckers yeah does like, it kind of feel like you're like Le Ramont? like you're like cheating you don't them. have to do it like i'm getting like very much forex vibes like fornix like it's like, the closest forex thing <laughs> it's the, the next closest thing to forex <laughs> because she told me like if we're seeing uh, an active player that's not spending enough money we come up with those special offers we come up with like tailor-made um amazing you know sales that he just cannot refuse and it starts with like two bucks 10 bucks 30 bucks 99 bucks and it gets way worse and and she was like she was like my bonuses is, is you know that's insane depended on how suckers you know how that's much that's insane how- and I was like, yeah, so you pick up the check because people are suckers. <laughs> <laughs> you know? That's a that's a tough, like not tough industry. I, I feel like I would be feeling like I'm cheating people, like intentionally cheating people. Yeah, like because dumb people. you have a moral compass. Yeah, no, you know, not don't. so many people. <laughs> Apparently know. Dimitri Bachman and Igor Bachman no, don't you have can't, moral you, compass. You, you don't know because they started a gaming company. Gaming company is a lot of work. There's a lot of work yeah. going in yeah. into this. You can't. The fact that people are suckers and willing to pay money for a video game. Pfft, yeah. You know? Mm-hmm. Um, so that was top four. Number five, Teddy Stegi, founder of a gambling software company. Again. 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 <laughs> again. again. Israelis know how to, yeah, 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 yeah. how to rip the system. Exactly. Um, and then the youngest billionaire in Israel. He's 35 years old. That's Holy crazy. Shit. Matan, that's age. your age. He's my age. <laughs> that's insane. Who's that guy? What His name is Rory friends? Resnick, okay. one billion net worth. Um, started co-founder at Wiz Israeli Cloud Security. Okay. Well, if you're listening, or you, I need to know if you're single. So yeah, like reach out. Or to you me. have a room for a or, best friend. Yeah, or that. <laughs> I'm all for it. Like I, I will throw Dor out of a window if <laughs> <laughs> if that would mean that I have a billionaire friend. Oh, Dor can come with us. You can support. You know, <laughs> you can help me support <laughs> Dorita. It's so it's so crazy though. If you think about the stats though, the fact that we made Israelis made one point five percent of the billionaire list, that's insane. That's huge. We make we make two Startup point, Nation. We make two point, I think, or twenty five Jewish people. Jewish people make twenty five percent of uh Nobel Prize uh, winners. It's an interesting stat. Wow. So, wow. So brains equal money wow well wow. so yeah so you better watch watch out guys because 25 percent. you know how much is muslim on um on the on the nobel prize <laughs> no idea it's i think 2.1 or something or 0.2 because it's like literature or whatever like ancient like arabic literature they got like a nobel prize um, um and good for them that's yeah. amazing but 25 percent of the Nobel recipient. And I'm talking about like often I am I'm talking about the, like people who you yeah. know those yeah. people. Yeah. So yeah. It's funny because um Kibi Michael's wife came here and she was like we asked her what she thought about Israel and she was like oh I thought I, th- I think it was Kibi or Michael even I don't I don't remember. They were like we asked them what they thought about Israel and they're like oh we expected like startup nation like big buildings and all this stuff yeah. and they came here and they're like what is this it's like a third world country <laughs> like in tel aviv yeah. um but guys the stats prove it we are a startup nation um at least this year i don't know about and you come years. here every week <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like we love you guys and you you come visit us like yeah. we're fucking mikonos like yeah. you're, you're coming yeah. here every other weekend and, and, and it's just so much fun like my family them. asked me them. my family asked me like can you please invite michael to shabbat Aww. dinner and i was like sure like uh, next time he'll he'll be here and my mom it sounded to my mom like an excuse and she was like but no but who knows when it's gonna be next time. i was like next week mom don't worry like he's yeah, in love seriously. with this place don't this, worry about yeah. it and she was like oh it's like that okay cool so <laughs> so michael you're invited to my family what about for, me uh, mike you um, when i'm saying michael i'm meaning michael kibi you and leah oh uh, david what, maybe maybe her maybe, brother. maybe david maybe, maybe. Maybe David. Okay, okay. We'll see. We'll see how you know how my family reacts. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay? So we'll see. I can't wait to meet your dad. Yeah. You, <laughs> you won't see much of him because oh he hates people. But you know, <laughs> you will see him, and then you, you he will disappear. Um. 
So, hot, top- I, and, I, and, I, and, I have, and I have to prove to him that you're actually from Texas. He won't believe me. I'll bring my cowboy hat and my cowboy boots. No, he, he, he will just look at you. My, my dad decides. You're fake. My dad decides when people are Yemenites and he doesn't even close. I'm not Yemenite. Not. He always used to ask me when we were kids. He always used to ask me, where's your Yemenite friend? And I was like, he's Persian. I was like, and, and my dad was like, he, no, he's not. <laughs> he's Yemenite and stop pr- pr- participating in this charade that he's Persian. I was like, dad, what is the. What is your dad Moroccan? Yeah. And your mom also? No, my, my mom is Kurdish. Okay. Would you consider your dad... And Spanish. Ra- oh, cool. Would yeah. you consider your dad racist? Like in a fun way. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like he's having fun with it. He's not actually racist. <laughs> no. a, listen. In a fun way. Let me explain myself. First of all, <laughs> racism could be fun. Let's start with that. But but let, let me let me. Matan's explain. trying to cover for his dad right now. Not at all. He can do, you know, for his own. But let me let me explain it that way. Our grandparents are hella uh, racist. Super Ooh, racist. Wow. You don't wow, want, wow. There's some questions you 100%. just don't ask because you don't yes. want to hear the answer, you know? 100%. And then our parents, they have a little bit of that, but yes. they don't, they're not racist. They're just like, they took the <laughs> jokes, you know? Yes. They're like, just like, oh, he's Ethiopian. Let him walk. You know what I mean? Just like, it's like in a fun way. It's yeah. not, it's not disrespectful. Yeah. It doesn't mean to hurt. And obviously they accept everyone. My sister married a Russian guy. The other sister, Tamari, married an Ukrainian guy. Like my dad started with like, what is happening? Like, why are you host? <laughs> like, why are this family hosting yeah. Europe? Like, what is going on? <laughs> but, but really he's got no problem with it. Yeah. So that's, what's really important yeah um so Matan's dad is a fun racist yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. what a cool way yeah. Yeah. um exactly <laughs> you can't be, you, you can't actually be racist when everyone's Moroccan or Yemenite around the gran- you the grandparents thing is so spot on though when, Come I, on. when I go visit Ronana when oh. uh, to see my grandma my Turkish grandma every time are you dating a Ex boy, yeah. I'm not gonna say which race yeah. it is. Yeah. You know, yeah. are you dating an ex boy? Please don't date an ex boy, blank boy. Mm. And I'm like, I'm mm-hmm. not dating anyone. And if yeah. I were to date a blank boy, I, you would be the last person I tell. <laughs> she would, she would never let it go, never forget it. I know, but that's how grandmas are. Yeah. They they wired differently. Yeah, they're wired differently. And she has, you know, soul dementia. Oh, saying, yeah, so who cares yeah, who you date? Yeah, yeah, you know what I mean. No, she remembers. She clings on to things. One time, I told her I went on a date with blank boy and she t- asked me every single time oh wow so sh- it, it it sticks, it the, sticks. Ra- the, the race sticks in our head my grandma's my my mom's mom also got a little bit of a of dementia going on and at some point like obviously i love my grandma and she's amazing but at some point i'm just telling her i'm married you know like it's <laughs> Like, and she believes it. Yeah, she's like, <laughs> "Did you got married?" And I was like, "Yeah, it was awesome." Don't you remember? You walked me down the aisle, Grandma. What is going? And she's like, "I'm sorry." Like, I don't. <laughs> I'm like, "Yeah, she's awesome." She's like, "Where is she?" She's like, "She's working." I told you. <laughs> That's amazing. I'm gonna start doing that. I'm so sorry. You know, girl. at least in their final few years, let them have kilo like, yeah. Let them have, feel relaxed. Don't bother them yeah, with your fucking you're problems. Right. I should start doing that. I'm mm. gonna use that trick. It's like, she's like, "Are you married?" Yes. I'm gonna start using that trick. Yeah. <clears throat> Um, so quickly back to Startup Nation and Jews dominating the world and Israeli billionaires. Do you feel like, I know a lot of Uli move here yeah. and are like, wow, I want to live a really nice lifestyle in Israel and Tel Aviv. And I want to make a lot of money. Like yeah. I want to be able to make the same success that my parents made for our family back home. Mm-hmm. What would you say to Olim who moved here, who are trying to build their career and hope to one day be on Forbes billionaire list in Israel? First of all, you need to have a very thick skin. This whole like pretending to be nice and polite that you guys do in the United States doesn't fly here. We'll say shit to your face that <laughs> you wouldn't believe. That you I thought you were going to say, first of all, leave. No, <laughs> no, no. You can come here and do whatever you want to do and, you know, um, really make your dream come true in Israel. And that's the most special thing because your parents or your grandparents uh, was here at some point. They left. You guys come back, came back here. And it's amazing that you can because if you look at refugees from like Arab countries that ran away to United States, Canada, Australia, whatever, they can't go back. They don't want to go yeah. back. It's There's no way they're going back to like, you know what? I'm going back to Iran to, you know, build my business. 
No, but you have this in Israel, so please come do it. It's amazing. And, and you guys, you just have to, you know, you just have to... Develop thick skin. Develop thick skin and understand that people are not rude. That's the main thing. Like, Except Israeli girls. We're, we're not rude. You're just very, very, very polite. So if the truth offends you, it's not being rude. It's being truthful, and I, w- I want to help you. But if everybody's like, oh, that's amazing, uh, you know, American, yeah. oh, my God, that's so beautiful. That's amazing. <laughs> so, you know, you, you can get a real feedback. And if you yeah. want to build something yeah. that will last, you need a real feedback. Yeah. So, yeah. accept that. Very true. Wise words from Matan Parrots, an up-and-coming Forbes billionaire. Yeah. 20, yeah. <laughs> Forbes billionaire list, 2024 Matan Parrots. That's true. That's <laughs> Youngest true. billionaire in competition with Roy Resnick. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Me and Roy. <laughs> BFFs, buddy. Oh, my gosh. Um, okay, so I know we haven't done this in a, a few weeks with you on the podcast, but we had some really good hot takes that... Are dying to be discussed. Let's, by do, Let's this. do this. Okay? Let's do this. I love hot takes. That's my favorite. That's my favorite. I know. My favorite, uh, I know. We have segment. some juicy, juicy takes. <laughs> okay. So, I love the sound of mock coat on the beach. You know what? I I hate it. Let's be completely honest. I hate it. Um, I feel a buck coming. But, but but there's a lot of people that I know that find. The sound of matkot soothing. So fast. Like like rain. They like <laughs> And people are just like, ah. You know what I mean? That's <laughs> weird. It's Sweet not me. Relief. Yeah, noise. It's not me, but it's some people it's, you know what? You know, I, I was surprised as you. Yeah, that people actually will listen to that and that makes them like wow. they fall asleep at the beach when people playing over their head. Yeah, that is true. You know? That is true. I don't know. I, when I first saw it, I thought th- I thought it was pretty controversial because everyone hates the sound. But now that you're speaking about it, maybe it's a little a little less controversial than I thought. You need to come to Ashdod. I don't need to come. You to need to come. Stop to Ashdod. talking about Ashdod. Every oh my god, even with Michael and Kibi at Shabbat dinner, guys, Ashdod is the best place. Like it you is. guys need to go. It is. What do you mean? <laughs> you guys like oh Tel Aviv, oh, Tel Aviv. Oh my god, <laughs> don't make me go outside of Tel Aviv, please. I'll melt. <laughs> Ashdod field trip, guys. Only when TLV field Ashdod trip, field that's trip. That's 25 minutes away. What do you Why mean? Why does it sound like an hour away? It's not. Do they have Walt in Ashdod? Yeah. Oh, they do? I'm, I'm do down. You? Okay, I'm going there. We can go there. Only and we'll survive oh, a day shit. in Ashdod. I don't think Ashdod wants you <laughs> at that point. Um, I apologize to Ashdod <laughs> right now. Apologize. Nobody there knows English, but a- apologize. <laughs> <laughs> do they have Olim in Ashdod? Mm-hmm. Yeah, they mm-hmm. do. Wow. Yeah, mainly from Russia. <laughs> <laughs> and France. Oh, my wow. God. Listen, <laughs> the only place on earth that France people love more than the Eiffel Tower is fucking Ashdod. That- Let me tell you this. Ashdod and Natania. Holy moly. Really? Natania, I knew. Ashdod? Oh, my I- God. They bu- they, they're they buying like <sighs> hundreds of apartments there, and they only visit during the summer. Is Ashdod the new up-and-coming Tel Aviv? Like... Ashdod for for a while now, uh, for the past I think seven to five years, maybe ten years even. I worked there at the at, at a website that you know covers all the restaurants in Ashdod, and I was like, restaurants in Ashdod, ugh, that's an awful job. And I worked there for three months. Listen, Boobin. some of the best wow. restaurants in Israel are located in Ashdod. Some of the and I'm talking about Italian, um, whatever barbecue. Fascinating. Wh- wow. On. Believable. Wow. The, the culinary scene in Ashdod is unbelievable. Like Olim. and there's a beach, and 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 so clean. Everything is clean. The, the 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 streets are very wide. There's like there's like a, I think they're gonna do like a public transportation special lane, whatever. And, and listen, Ashdod is beautiful. Wow. Most underrated city. Olim never hear about this stuff. We don't. We don't know. Because like, you what, don't hear about anything outside of Tel Aviv. Tel Aviv. We know a little Herzliya. Come on, IDC vibes, all that. We know Herzliya, <laughs> but no, <laughs> outside of Tel Aviv and Herzliya, we don't. Listen, Ashdod. Guys, we need to go to Ashdod. I need to Who's get down? some money from Who's Ashdod. Who's down? I'll organize an Olim and Tel Aviv Yom Kif. Yeah, Yom Kif. Yom Kif with Matan, our tour guide. Yes, I'll take we'll, you guys to all the like we'll amazing bring, places. We'll bring some security guards, yeah. soldiers. We'll do birthright we'll birth all over right again. To Ashdod. <laughs> <laughs> I actually think that could be a. I'm out. Wait. I, you know what? Listen. I think, I think that could we be an amazing idea. I think we should start a program 
that taking Olim outside of Tel Aviv. I think it's amazing. Every day, like a special city. I think it's amazing. Right? We'll do a birthright style. We'll bring soldiers. We'll video it. We'll do a reality TV show. <gasps> Our next idea. Yeah. Okay. She's okay. always we'll taking it, it over the top. <laughs> we'll talk about it we'll after. We'll pitch it on Netflix. No, listen. <laughs> I'm just going to go to Ashdod and eat some French fries. Just relax. <laughs> <laughs> you know? just, where are you going? Just relax. We'll see how Ashdod works. Okay, and then, then we'll, we'll talk. We'll think we'll about talk. the reality we'll TV later. show. Okay. Okay. okay, deal. Okay, next one. <laughs> Ar- Arsim ruin all the good parties that's true that's true not a hot take that's 100% true I was I gonna make you, a ballot take but I wanted to debate it I'll tell you something even more that I uh, I was a bartender for three years and in a place that really didn't let any arsim in okay. now they didn't tell them to leave when they came it's just the place the secret is because if, if you're in Ashdod obviously a lot of arsim are gonna come <laughs> so the, sec- the secret is is that you just put a very specific type of music you don't sell their favorite beverages. There's no vodka Red Bull going on. <laughs> Nothing. No vodka Red Bull. No, and, and then, like, you know, over time, they just don't come. Like, they, they just sit there. They go inside. They sit there for like 10 minutes and then they leave. But is that a smart business move? Because I yes. feel like Arsene come and spend so much money. Like, That's Chalvata, true. They literally Arsene fun Chalvata. That's true. But uh, So that's, if I was a business owner, I mean. That's very true. But the thing is that Arsene are finding finding it very hard to enjoy if other people are not suffering. That's the thing. They enjoy the most when other people are suffering. That's why they're being so loud. That's why they're always like bumping into people because they will have the best time if the people around them are suffering, right? So in that place in Ashdod called Schlumper where I worked for three years, they talked about this. They were like, listen, Arsim give like huge tips. They always come with their dates. They yeah. always try to impress. They yeah. always like buy the whole Spend bar. so like, much money, yeah. But it doesn't worth the uncomfortable feeling that people in the bar feel. So when they eliminated that aspect of Arsim coming, <laughs> a lot of girls started to come. A lot of people, a lot of like- So did that balance out the losses taken from Arsim? Like, did they build a PL, like a profit and loss? Like, no, okay, I don't like, think- <laughs> We're losing the Arsim, we're going to make money off the, the girls. Like, I think it's worth, it's worth the aspect of, this is a safe place. There's never fighting. There's never okay. chairs flying around. There's never like, you don't have to have okay. like a, a big, like three security guards. You know what I mean? Yeah. Over time, people know that they go there to relax and don't have to fight. So, you know. Got it. Okay. Got to know. Good but to know. it's it's 100% true. It's 100% true. And not just for Americans, for Israelis. 100%. <clears throat> yeah. If you have a brain, Arsim will bother you. <laughs> okay, next. Eyal Shani is overrated. 100% true. 100% true. Eyal Shani mm-hmm. sells the most basic bullshit <laughs> on earth and expect people to pay like 150 shekels. It's I- a fucking pita with tomato. F*** you. I personally agree, but I know a lot of Olim slash Americans won't agree. You know, he opened up all these restaurants in New York. Everyone's freaking out over the restaurants in New York. Sold out. It's crazy. Listen. It's insane. It's absolutely insane. He's an amazing chef. Let's say that. He's an amazing chef. He's got a Michelin star, whatever. I'm not disrespecting his chef abilities. I'm just saying that he understood that you don't have to make like super fancy food to attract people. He was like... I'm going to be in the United States. I'm going to sell some fucking pitas a with a sado. A cauliflower in an oven flour. with the salt. I went there in New York and I was blown away. It's delicious. Yeah. Right? Yeah, it's but great. it's so oh, overly fucking priced. simple. And overly priced. And overly priced yeah. that you're like, listen, it's, it's a nice experience to have yeah. every once in a while, but you don't have to freak out about 100%. everything he does. Like yeah. not everything he does is pure genius. Sometimes it's just tomatoes. Literally, or a cauliflower. Or a cauliflower. That you can make for yeah. five bucks. Exactly. Um, so yes, overrated. <clears throat> okay. We love you. <laughs> but we love you. <laughs> You're doing amazing work in New York. All my friends love you. They're obsessed. Um, okay. Mozzarella sticks should exist as a late night snack in Tel Aviv. Yes, please. Yes, please. Oh my God, mozzarella sticks. Why don't we have them here? I don't know. And it upsets me. How do we make this happen? Which restaurant chain can we insert this we into? We'll start a company. <laughs> <laughs> Stop you and your ideas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. only TLV mozzarella sticks in the next business That's what you were about to say. That's what you were about to say. Barazani sticks, we're going to call it. <laughs> hey, that's pretty good. Yeah. But that sounds kind of... Yeah, yeah, exactly. We're going to be a body's, you know, worst competitor. <laughs> oh my God. That would be... Imagine 2 a.m. You just had a crazy night out on Rothschild and you're really drunk. 
and you go and have these mozzarella sticks. You dip it in mo- uh, tomato sauce. Marinara sauce. Marinara sauce. Ooh, not tomato sauce. Marinara sauce or ranch. Or ranch. Wow, wow, wow. Yes, we gotta, please. please, if anyone's listening, make it happen. Okay. No, but it's not really like you have like the the gvinatsuba sticks. Yeah, you, but it's nice, but it's not the same. Yeah, and you, you can really fry it. One. You want exactly. a deep fry? I know one. where this is going. You know, <gasps> Americans fry everything. We fry everything. Especially you guys those. just fry everything, especially but, Texans. It, oh my god! Exactly. So yeah, fried pickles, fried everything. Anyways, Mozzarella sticks. Make it happen, guys. Make Listeners, it happen. Make please. it happen. Um, okay, last one. Get drivers. Give the best advice. Really? I don't even get that much, <laughs> but you'll tell me. I don't know. So, so yes or no? I mean, there are, there I, are some who give amazing advice. You'll be sitting with them and, uh, you know, that 40-minute drive from Ben Gurion Airport to Tel Aviv, they'll be talking your heads off, giving you advice about making all the honest stuff, but others are just, like, weird and creepy. Mm. But um, apparently a really hot take. People were commenting, no, get drivers are so annoying. They're the worst. And other ones are They're saying, not the worst. Listen, Depends. guys, taxi Listen. drivers in general, in general. you know, yeah. they, they live on the road. So you can't really judge those people. I will kill myself a hundred percent. I will kill myself in the, in the second shift of this shit. I will fucking drive off a fucking bridge and end <laughs> it all. I will hundred percent do it, especially with the traffic jams and whatever. Two days, 48 hours. That's what I give myself before I fucking drive Lose myself inside the mm-hmm. River. Like, whoosh, <laughs> you know what I mean? Take the set, be- yeah. the, the, the yeah. seat belt off, and just fly. Yeah. So you know the level of. Do you think it's creepy if a taxi driver? I've had this happen to me twice. This would never happen in America. Offers you candy. Yeah, they do it all the time. It's so weird. They have like candies. It's like, it's and like, like a little, you know, like I don't know. I don't know. It's, they want to. They want it. They want you to rape them. They want. You, I I said in the t- like a few days ago. It's I like, I was little girl. Do you want candy? No, it's not. Women always make it like a li- <laughs> little girl. You want nobody gives a shit if you're a woman or a guy. I, I've been I've been offered candy oh, multiple you have times. Candy? Okay, okay. Yeah, okay. like cold okay. water, whatever. That will make you rank okay. them higher. Because yeah. the competition is fierce. Yeah. And I think that made a lot of taxi drivers really calm the fuck down. Because before before get taxi, they were really like to the point of just fucking fighting people. Wow. And then get taxi came along and the whole rating system came. Yeah. And Uber got stopped because yeah, Uber of stopped Israeli taxi drivers. So they always know something is coming and they always, you, you, you can rank, like you can rank them. Yeah. So yeah. Th- that's why they're offering candy yeah, and they're okay. offering you water, whatever you want to charge your phone, whatever. Yeah. So yeah. yeah, we got that under control. It's a very Israeli thing yeah. to like offer you candy or a gum or whatever, even if it's not a taxi driver. <laughs> yeah. Just say we're going for we're going for a drive. I'm going to offer you some shit yeah. that I got. You know, yeah. you don't have to take it. You don't have to be like, okay, fair, oh, fair. No, oh my god, no, oh my god, no. <laughs> you just either take the can- the candy or not. No. Fair. So uh, one last thing about ta- get taxi drivers. When I studied abroad here, when I was uh, 20 years old, we had we lived at the Einstein dorms in Ramad Aviv. And we had this cab driver named Ron who would just wait out there for us. Every time he knew exactly when the American girls would be going out and exactly when they would be coming back. And I was like, this is real service, like right here. That's a very They're, smart business decision. Very smart. Was waiting on the dot. We didn't even have to text him. We didn't, we, we got his number also. I don't know Amazing. if that's a little too much, but. No, no. No, it's that's good, right? It's fine. Yeah, if yeah. your, if, if he's, he's the go-to. Your Ron, go-to if driver. you're listening, get Taxi Driver. You were amazing, phenomenal. Um, thanks for waiting us waiting for us outside of Kuliyama every night at two thirty in the morning. Amazing, Why not? amazing service, guy. Unbelievable. I I uh, I had the, a guy like that in Mexico, and you I don't know Mexico stories. They're they're always in Mexico. Yeah, I don't know like what about my appearance. I really like. I'm, I'm I'm being honest right now. Something about my appearance just got him. Like he was like, you look like my cousin, and I was like, okay, thank you. I guess I guess your cousin is very handsome. And he was like, no. I was like, okay. <laughs> That's a very weird thing to say. <laughs> but ever since that moment that he kind of like backhanded complimented me. Kind of. Kind of. Yeah. He was just like, if you need anything, let me know. If you need anything about That's like. That's so sweet. If you need to know stuff about the hotels you're going to be in, let me know. When you come to Cancun. I'll t- he was driving me from Playa del Carmen to Cancun to Tulum. To- he was just he was just happy. To- like, we had the best conversations well, Really, the best conversations ever, and 
I, I was I was like, this is very cool. Yeah. Like, I don't know what is happening, but this is very good. Like, help me with everything. And so, yeah. So, sometimes it happens. Not just to women. Not just to American yeah. girls. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> Um, okay, folks, that's it for today. What? Wow. Yeah. I know. Hot takes are the it? last piece of the conversation. Holy moly. But we'll be back with more current events. We'll be, yeah. we'll listen to We got a to lot them. to talk about. We got a lot to talk about. And we're trying to make this podcast more of like escape kind of thing yes. of the reality. Yes. We we promised ourselves that we, obviously you're going to talk about a situation a little bit because yes. you can't ignore yes. it. But we want to give you guys 30 minutes, 40 minutes of just pure, you know, yeah. Talking about billionaires, talking about the Kardashians, talking about yeah, shit. Yes, yes. If you guys We're got suggestions, pop culture to Tel Aviv. If you guys got suggestions or topics that you want to discuss, please. Yes. Uh, uh, follow. No, Matan and I dating them. No, no, no. Uh, unfortunately. <laughs> uh, follow Olimpiad V. Follow Odiote pages on Instagram. Follow Matan Parrot. Uh, follow me if you want to laugh and you know have a good time and suggest. Everything yep. usually what what we do what Shaka does is he posts it on Sunday like a uh, question box so just mm-hmm. like but you do it like yeah. on Thursdays or Wednesdays whatever I'll start doing them more often too exactly yeah, yeah. we're getting into before it. we're recording yep. because people are giving great yes. topics yes um in in my podcast me and Raz of the podcast here in Hebrew uh, we get great topics we get is it some general stuff general topics or current event topics everything both, both. whatever you want to suggest whatever you want us to talk about and discuss. Please. Um, Send get, it over. Yeah, because yep. this, the podcast is really built on what you guys want to hear. Yep. We obviously have our own topics, but if you guys have something specific that you want to know or some topics you want us to talk about, please let us know. Yep. Thanks, guys. Yeah. Until next time. And of course, you can you can listen to us uh, on Spotify. Play, uh, you play can YouTube. watch us on YouTube. Clips are going to be posted on, oh, yeah. in Olympia. And we can finally collab because Matan is off shadow band. Oh my God. Woo. I can collab so yeah. you can see Until it. Until you're a shadow band again. <laughs> Shut the fuck up already. <laughs> twitch, 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 Why? Twitch, twitch, Why? Knock on wood. Knock on wood. Knock Why on wood. Knock on wood. Yeah. It's okay. Mark Zuckerberg is on your side. Don't yeah, worry. Yeah, hopefully. Yeah, so you can watch us everywhere. You can listen to us everywhere. Just please do. We love you guys. Thank you. We love you. Audio יוצרי התוכן של ישראל הוקלט באולפני אדיו המשווקת את ספוטיפיי בישראל. אדיו.